Hi, Jim Ewing for ProVision Solutions, Inc. and ProVision's business success. Thanks for joining us as we learn about some of the things that are necessary for success in business today. In this series, you'll learn from those who have experienced business. You'll pick up some great tips that will help you to succeed in your own business. Apply the lessons that are learned and pass them along to others. Yes, I am Greg Gazzana. Yes, I am the gadget guy, but I'm not all about gadgets. I am a technology columnist, small business and technology speaker, and I also help companies in promoting their businesses. So, technology, small business entrepreneurship, and presentations. I had a retail operation many a number of years ago. I've also worked with a number of startups. I've done some consultancy, and I have an extensive background in writing. How do you find and retain great staff? It's absolutely critical that you have the right staff because you're just one individual. Obviously, the more hands you have in a perfect world, the more money you can make, the more efficient you can be, the more profitable your business, the more successful the business can be. On the other hand, if you have the wrong staff, it's the other way around. So when you're hiring, one of the things that you want to make sure you're doing is you're making sure that you're finding the right staff that will match with the business. If you yourself as an individual are not in a position to really gauge that, if you don't feel that you're a good HR person, then hire someone to do it or find, find an organization that will help you do it. It's critical that you have those individuals because once you get them, you want to make sure that they're going to be there with you, that you can, they can work with you, that they can trust you because at some point you don't want to be there the whole time. How do you improve the corporate culture? Sometimes people are motivated by money, sometimes people are motivated by being able to accomplish a certain goal or have fun in the process. Again, we were very inclusive, we were very open with the staff as to where we are. When we were, having, when we were doing well, we shared that with them. When we were having some challenges, we shared that as well. But one of the neat things that we did one year, we wanted to meet a specific target. So what I did is I went to the bank and I got the silver $5 coins, and I can't remember how much they were at the time, it might have been $10, because I think silver was maybe $5. And I said to each one of the staff, I said, if we achieve our target, I'm going to turn that silver into gold. Turn that silver into gold. Now, I believe at that time, the gold was probably about $300 an ounce. So, and I wouldn't have got him a silver coin. It was, would have been a, silver, a gold equivalent. So really, that $10 would have ended up being probably three or $400. And it was amazing how well that the team worked together. I had my sales manager and my service manager working together. And it was just amazing because not only were they working towards the common goal, but they were learning a lot in the process. And as it turned out, we just, just missed the target. It was because of a courier situation. It was a courier didn't live product and we couldn't get it out. But each staff member, they got their bonus. It turned out to work about $300. And it was absolutely amazing how that exercised change things. How can you improve the working relationships in your environment? The other thing you want to do with your staff, and especially if you're in a situation, and I'll use my computer business as an example, we had some, administ we had some administrative people, we had technical people, and we had sales people. And one of the things that we, that we did is we got them actually working together. When we had staff meetings, we made sure that we shared the information because the receptionist might say, or the administrative person might say, well, what do I need to know about the computers? Well, you're just directing traffic. Well, you know what? Maybe a customer will come in, or maybe they'll phone, and so maybe the technicians are busy, the salespeople are busy. You may not be able to solve their problem, but you might be able to talk to them in a certain way that you can actually begin to help them. We, got our, we kept our staff always involved, and of course, that evolved over time. In fact, what we made sure is, what we discovered is that Customers sometimes would prefer to talk to the technicians than the salespeople. So we actually made sure that they were all, <laughs> we made sure that they were cross trained. We would have sessions where we would help the technicians understand the, the basic concept of sales as well. Because sometimes if a computer was in the back and it was being repaired and it needed more memory or an extra hard drive, well, instead of sending it back to the salesperson, they could call up the customer, the technician would pick up the phone and say, This is your situation, we've got your machine open, it only cost you a few extra bucks, we can put a new hard drive in. But I think in general, if you do the best that you can to hire the right people, engage them, keep them involved in what's going on, don't assume that they don't know. And also help them grow in the process and offer them some good benefits. Then, 
you'd be amazed what can happen. How do you deliver exceptional customer service? What should the entrepreneur know about customer service? Well, make sure they know what customer service is because unfortunately what I find in some businesses as a consumer that they preach that they give good customer service but quite often that's all they give is it's really just, just lip service. Again, it's almost like your vision and your goal for your business. You have to define, define what that is. You need to communicate that expectation with your staff and let them know what the, what the level is and what the expectation is. For example, if, if it's a computer repair, if your turnaround time is 48 hours, then you need to make sure that that actually is communicated with your, your clients or your staff, or is it, are you giving one hour service? If you go into one hour dry cleaning and it's gonna be two or three hours, you're actually not gonna be happy about that. So I think it's setting up that expectation and also making sure that you communicate that to your customer as well. Also, if you cannot meet that expectation, then what you need to do is you need to basically go back to the customer and say, either make it up to them. Say you're sorry, fix the problem as opposed to just hiding. I see a lot of individuals and a lot of people that just hide and they blame it on something else. Take responsibility. Greg Gaz and the Gadget Guy. Thanks for your time, Greg. My mm -hmm. pleasure, Jim. If you have questions about business success or other things to move forward with your organization, drop us a note and we'll get back to you with information to help you move forward. For ProVision Solutions Inc. and the Business Success Blog, thanks for watching.